Okay, so we are going to begin our neuroanatomical journey through the nervous system. We're going to start with the spinal cord. We're then going to talk about cranial nerves and then brainstem, forebrain, and wrap up with uh, how nutrients get in and out of the central nervous system. So today we're going to start with the spinal cord. Before we get into the nitty-gritty of the spinal cord, I want to uh, explain my strategy here. If we come over to the board, what we see is a diagram of the brain and the spinal cord from the side. Now, the beauty of neuroanatomy is that you can use your understanding of neuroanatomy to figure out what is wrong with a person. But you only can do that with uh, functions that depend on pathways that go the length of the nervous system. So for example, if you had a pathway that went from here to here, that's not going to be very useful for you in trying to figure out where in the nervous system a, a, a lesion is. What we want is our long pathways. And there are three long pathways that essentially do that. Okay? So those three long pathways are going to be the, the ones that we keep an eye on throughout this neuroanatomical journey. And what we're going to do right now is I'm going to introduce those to you. Before I do that, I do want to say that, that these are, are useful so long as we're, we're here, but it, it doesn't give us anything once we're up in the brain. And so when we're up in the brain, we're going to add a couple of pathways. And most notably, we're going to add visual field pathways, which, which give us an orthogonal uh, vantage point. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with these three pathways. Two of them are sensory, which means that information is coming in from the periphery and going up to end here in the cortex. And then one is motor, which means it starts here and it goes down and uh, out through the motor neurons to skeletal muscles. Okay. So let's go look at these pathways. The first pathway that we're going to talk about is the dorsal column medial lumniscus pathway. That, that's, that's a mouthful, and I, I apologize for that. Um, the dorsal column medial lumniscus pathway is also the, path, is the pathway that carries information that will give rise to perception of light touch, vibration, and also to the sensation of proprioception where your body is in space, where your, your arms and your joints are, et cetera. So information from the periphery about touch, vibration, proprioception comes in through sensory neurons. These are neurons that sit in a peripheral ganglion. Remember that sensory ganglion neurons derive from neural crest and they, they're peripheral neurons. In this case, these are dorsal root ganglion cells. They come into the central nervous system and they go all the way up to the uh, back, the very back part of the brain, to the medulla, where they synapse on a neuron, which then crosses the midline, goes up to thalamus, and then from thalamus through something called the somatosensory radiation to somatosensory cortex, which we are going to abbreviate as S1. So S1, somatosensory cortex. So the details, you're going to get ad nauseum. I'm going to repeat them lots and lots of times. <clears throat> what I want you to understand right now is that this is a sensory pathway. It goes up from the periphery into the spinal cord. It travels on the same side within the spinal cord. And then it decussates or crosses at just inside of the frame and magnum just on the other side of the frame of magnum, so in caudal medulla. And that's, we're going to call that sensory decussation. And after that, it travels on the contralateral side. So my right somatosensory, somatosensory cortex is going to tell me about a light touch of my left hand. OK, everything's going to cross. That's a very important pathway. Number two pathway. Again, a sensory pathway. Now information is coming in from the periphery. It's crossing immediately. 
and then wending its way up to somatosensory cortex. So in this case, the, the uh, neurons in the dorsal ganglia are different. We'll look at, a little, we'll look at that a little bit right now and in more detail later, uh, that different nerve fibers carry different types of information. In the case of the spinothalamic pathway, this is uh, pain and information that is going to give rise to perceptions of pain and changes in temperature. So the information comes in through these uh, sensory neurons that sit in the dorsal root ganglion. It enters the spinal cord, synapses, and the cell that it synapses on then sends an axon across the midline up all the way to thalamus. So for um, a, a cell that, that enters the spinal cord, say right here, that is, that's in me, it's, I don't know, it's two feet or something uh, to get, get from here to thalamus. So that's a, long, that's a long process. Not as long as this process, but that's a long process. And then from, it synapses in the thalamus in a similar place as the dorsal column metalumniscus pathway and goes up into somatosensory cortex again through the same pathway, somatosensory radiation. These two pathways together which carry touch, vibration, proprioception on one hand, and pain and temperature on the other hand, these constitute the somatosensory system. Okay, there's one other, uh, we'll just mention now, we'll pick it up later, there's one other uh, percep uh, sensory perception that is carried in this spinothalamic pathway, and that's itch, okay? All right, so that is the, the, the spinothalamic pathway, and now here is the corticospinal pathway. The corticospinal pathway begins in the motor cortex. This is a game of Simon Says. Simon Says, put your hand on your head. To do that, that has to engage motor cortex. And from motor cortex, there is a neuron that comes down, crosses, goes down the spinal cord, crosses at the foramen magnum where the spinal cord meets the medulla, which is called the spinomedullary junction. So it's going to cross here, come down, and talk to a motor neuron. A motor neuron is the final common pathway. You want to get to a skeletal muscle, you got to go through a motor neuron. Skeletal muscle doesn't hear anything from a motor neuron. Skeletal muscle never contracts. This is, a, this skeletal muscle is, is only going to work. It's never going to work on its own. It's not automatic. It has to get instructions from the motor neuron. This cell needs the motor neuron to get to this muscle. So this is, uh, this is the pathway. It's just two neurons, the motor cortex cell. M1 means motor cortex. And it crosses, it comes down, and then it um, synapses on a motor neuron, which then goes out to innervate a skeletal muscle. So the one of the important points it, here is where each of these pathways cross. So in the case of the dorsal column metalumniscus pathway, it crosses in caudal medulla. So in spinal cord, information about light, touch, vibration, proprioception is on the same side as the, the part of the body that, that it refers to. In the case of pain and temperature, information crosses immediately and is then carried on the opposite side, the contralateral side. And in the case of the corticospinal pathway, information within the spinal cord is on the same side as the muscles it's going to innervate, on the opposite side from the motor cortex from which it arose. That's a lot of information. <laughs> This is absolutely critical. This is the high yield stuff. This is stuff you have to remember now, tomorrow, five years, 20 years. This makes you um, not just a, a candidate to be a physician, but this makes you an informed individual. Everyone should know this material. Everyone should learn it for good, for real. Spend some time. Don't cram it. Learn it deeply and well. So what we're going to do in this section is go through this. We're gonna start in the next uh, video, we'll start with just these, these fibers. We'll start at the periphery. And we're gonna make our way in.